Hey everyone, it's Jordan. So I have a new drawing video for you. And before we start, I just wanted to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I'll talk more about them later, but I just wanted to let you know that you can click the link below to get 10% off your first purchase to help build your own website, domain, or even online store. I have a lot of different ideas for drawing tutorials that I want to do, but I've still been on my wildflower kick lately, so I decided to show you five more flowers that you can draw. We'll start with the ox eye daisy. For this video, I drew all of the flowers in pencil first, and then I will do the tutorial as I outline them in pen so you can see them easier. To start out, make a bunch of small dots around in a circle and around the edge you want them to be pretty close together and then start spreading them out as it gets closer to the center of the circle. And then the petals are long and typical daisy petals. Let your hand go loose, they don't need to be perfect so if your lines are a little bit wiggly that's okay. And then just add some lines and shadows for the creases in the petals. Here I'm drawing a daisy from another perspective. This is with more of the bottom showing. And then the stem is very long and skinny. And the leaves are also long, but they have jagged points on the ends. And I just wanted to clarify something. So when you write the scientific name of a plant, you put the scientific name in italics and the common name in just regular letters. But as you can see, I did the opposite. I know some people who are in the science community might get upset about that. I like how it looks and it doesn't bother me. If it bothers you, I apologize. The next flower is the sulfur sink foil. To begin, draw a tiny circle and then five heart-shaped petals and then some tiny lines coming from that circle for the stamen. And these flowers grow in bunches, so you can draw several of them and then draw the stems to connect them all. The stems are pretty long and skinny, and like I said, they have several flowers on one stem. I drew a few little flower buds coming off of the stems, and the leaves are tiny and kind of bumpy on the edges. Last night you went and bought some cigarettes and I know that she hates The next one is the flowering dogwood and this might not technically be considered a wildflower because it grows on trees but I still wanted to include it because I really like it. So you're going to start by making a bunch of tiny circles in an oval shape for the center of the flower and then the petals are pretty rounded but they have a divot in the top and they come in a set of four. And then you can see I just added some lines for the wrinkles of the petal. I don't always feel like this. It's just sometimes I think then I drew a thin branch that kind of has knobs on it for the stem. And I added a little bit of shadowing to show that it's a branch and not just a regular stem. And then here I'm drawing the flower from a different angle as usual. And then the leaves are big and round with a lot of veins in the inside. The next flower is the cone flower, and this is actually a type of daisy. So you're going to start by making a bunch of upside down U shapes for the center of the flower. And then do the typical daisy petals. The stem is pretty long and thin, just like the last daisy we did. 
and then here I'm drawing the flower from a different angle and as you can see that center part of the flower is pretty raised up above the petals and if it helps you you can look up an actual photo of this flower and use that as a reference while you're drawing that's what I do whenever I draw these and it really helps you make an accurate depiction of the flower the leaves grow in bunches at the bottom of the stems and there's nothing too special about them, they're pretty basic leaf shapes. The last flower is the bloodroot. You're going to start by making a similar marking as the last flower. Do the upside down U shape, but make this more of a tall skinny center instead of rounded and flat. And then the petals are large and kind of pointed on the ends. The leaves kind of remind me of cabbage leaves. I don't really know how to describe them, so just copy what I'm doing. And they grow at the base of the stem, just like the last flower. And now I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about Squarespace. I've actually been using them for several years now for my portfolio website. And I love Squarespace because it was so easy to put together the website that I was envisioning in my head just by customizing the templates they offer. I don't have any web design skills, I don't really know how to code, and you don't need any of those skills. It was really easy to use. So like I said before, you can use Squarespace for creating an online shop or domain as well. So they really offer everything you need for your online space. If you'd like to try it out, you can follow my link below to get 10% off your purchase. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. That's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you are doing well, and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys!